with the trick of the media query, this works. Writing a height and a width and all of that, we've, we've seen that. The big secret is these media queries, and these are very common ones. You can look up more of them as our devices get bigger and all of that and more high quality. But it's just about what looked good on a big size and what will look good on a small size. So we're redefining things. Next up is the section.blog. The blog class attached to the section tag. This is going to be similar to something we already did before. Clear both. We want the one column. Well, we, I thought we already did that. Yes, we already did it, but on a different size. Because we're in this particular size, it didn't inherit clear both from the other size, because that is separate. Things in the different media queries are separate from each other. That's why we had the basic set of CSS outside of a media query. The width of that, 100%. Take up 100% the size of that, that small screen. We need to remove the border, and we need to remove the padding. Again, that seems very familiar to what we did before. It is. It's basically what we did on a previous size. But now that we're targeting this smaller size, we have to say it again. We have to repeat ourselves because of the smaller size. Section h2, section h2 featured. What did we call it? Uh, Featured. Section h2 dot h2 featured. So the heading 2 of a class h2 featured in the section, we need to tweak this a little bit because we're dealing with a smaller size. Um, margin 1m at the top and 0 around the rest. Font size, 1.5m, text align center. That heading 2 was on the left when we were at these other sizes, and that looked fine. But now that we've got a smaller device, centering that text should look nicer. <laughs> The articles themselves need a little bit of editing. So after the section article, adding 1m. So don't have the article bumped up exactly to the edges of the container. Give a little bit of padding around it, 1m. But stretch out the article to fill about 90% of the space there. <laughs> article H group. We didn't touch the article H group before. It looked fine in those other sizes, but now here, clear both margin, top, 1M. When we had a larger size screen, we had two columns in total, but then the actual article, picture on the left, text on the right. So we sort of had two columns there as well. Now, with such a smaller screen, we're pushing the text of the name of the character down. We're clearing it. It's no longer float left. It's no longer the two-column layout. It's cleared. It's pushed down. Uh, 
article P first letter. We did that drop cap effect previously. We said over here somewhere, first letter. And those sizes might have been good for when the screen was bigger, but now, again, smaller screen. Instead, what we'll do is padding 10 pixels, 5 pixels, 0 and 0, and font size a little larger, 4M. Article figure. Clear both to keep it on its own line with 95%, margin 0 all around. But then margin bottom, 1M. Adding five pixels, border. Oh, we'll leave the border the same. And we'll do a border radius 10 pixels. We'll round the corners of that figure more when it's in the smaller size. from above, float to the left with the two columns, clear both. With originally 290, now I'm saying 95% of the size. Margin, give yourself some space all around, now canceling it out uh, at the top. I canceled it there after adding some, but you're backwards now because you've got text below it. Border, didn't say anything about border, so it inherited the one pixel solid. We wrote the radius and uh, pen, put them in a different order, but that's rewriting it then to make it a smaller size. Yes? Um, the three <clears throat> Pretty much, yes. Okay, yes, clearing is, is doing the opposite of the float. Yes. We're clearing the previous element. Uh, when we had it float, it was floating the picture to the left and the text to the left, even though it would, it would make sense float left, float right, but the picture is to the left, to the left, and the text is to the left, so they were both next to each other. Clear both then pushes it so that they're on separate lines. So how, how is it possible to know that we are the text and the picture? They're in sequence in the HTML. When you view the actual HTML, you have figure, you have H group. It knows because they're right next to each other, and clearing uh, works because they're, they're next to each other. If this figure were somewhere else over here, and the H group were down here, then it might not work. But because they're, they flow this way, then they follow each other that way, then it works. And again, for the Like you mentioned that this test is for float, and it would then apply for width, width from edge in the line, right? Now, or only for float? Only for float, pretty much, yes. And on the, on the bar measure, that, uh, that it could be clear or not? Which one? I don't know, because of now that we learn float, and so clear now for float, but could be clear for other things? I think it could, but this is what it's most commonly used for, to clear other floats you've done before, to take away the float and to put it back into the normal, into a normal float. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and all the other condition like with legend or some legend bottom that we just write and then check check the so just change the, the, the sign, that's it. Yeah, so if originally we had margin bottom 7 and I put margin bottom 1, that's how you change it. Yeah, okay. It's opposite. Thank you. I want to do something interesting here. Article figure image. Border radius. We didn't have any border radii for the previous sizes. Here, I want to set it so that when we're this small, I also want the image corners to be rounded. It's just for style. That's completely optional. Save it and, and run it to see that result. But now when I get to those smaller sizes, the picture also has a rounded corner. It's icing on the cake. It doesn't... it's not mission critical. But I think it looks nice when it's that small and you've got some roundness check mine what it looks like at this point so I'm gonna refresh it resize it at this point h2 top or h2 featured is centered there's the picture rounded the corners are also rounded when I'm at a higher level of size the corners of the picture are not rounded and on that size the picture also rounds the border should have disappeared. The drop cap is bigger now. The B there is bigger, just for interest. Some of these margins have been tightened up as such. Uh, I haven't dealt with that sidebar yet. That's coming up. But then now the text, the H2 and the P, are below the picture. When we were at a higher size, we still had an, enough of a width like that to have the picture next to it, the text next to the picture. So next we can start to deal with the aside. I want to do something very similar that I did on that other size, where I center this stuff, uh, I change the styling a little bit of the borders, and it's pretty much done. All of this is still inside of the lower end mobile. Make sure you don't go outside of it. Aside. Clear both to make sure that it's on its own line. Width of 100%. Padding of nothing, zero. Text align center. Pretty much what we had on an earlier line, I think we made our width 100 this time instead of with a little empty space. Now I've got the aside wanting to take up as much space as it can below the main section of blog. And then I have to deal with the, the links. So aside, section A. Any links in a section, <coughs> border bottom. Actually, I don't think we need this one because... Oh, no, we do. We're dashing it. We're turning it dashed. Two pixels dashed. We could have left it alone. Midnight blue. We could have, we could have completely removed a side section A and let it be inherited from above. But because I want dashed lines instead, I have to specify A tags inside of section tags inside of a side tags get changed like this. And then I need the hovers, the hover state, aside section A hover. Remember, no space between the A and the pseudo class here. No space on that. I already set up a hover above for a left brown edge. Now I want a border right. pixel solid brown lastly for the aside 
we've got H2s, a side section H2, just a side H2. There are, the H2s are outside of the sections, I think. So this should work here. And we want padding of less at the top, only a, a quarter of an M, and then around all the edges, nothing. The very, very last element in my whole project is the footer. The text down at the bottom, I'm going to increase that space a little bit. So after the aside, we then have footer, the last element. Height 2 and 1 quarter M. So if I check my browser, resize it, these on top look good, scroll down, my sidebar now is there. I think it's still way too much space, which I can change that. I start to hover over these items, looks good. Centered text, down at the bottom that size. If I'm at the maximum size, I get some of the star field, I get the two columns, that was our original. As I sh shrink it down to a certain point, it's then going to jump to take about 95 or whatever we said. So it takes up more space, the wrapper got a little larger. I go further down to some sort of tablet mode eventually, like that. Well, the sidebar doesn't fit on the side anymore, so it moves down. The picture gets bigger. I still have picture text to the side of it, float left. Both of them are set to float left. And when we get down to the lowest level, that those tabs don't work anymore. I, I need a different navigation. And then the sidebar is at the bottom again and styled. So here's one way then to do a responsive site from the biggest type of screen, multi-column, to the smallest size right there. To get the full effect, I would open it on a real mobile device, where we can get close enough with resizing our browser, going into the responsive mode of, of the browsers, and playing with it. When I say play with it, it's it's changing these values. What if instead I, I, I needed to do a 95% width of the aside for some reason? Well, how would I even know what values to choose that inspector, when you open up the development tools, you're going to hover over and resize your screen and select a piece. And what if I did 1.75m right there? Looks good. So then I'll save it in Notepad permanently. This is just a playground as you change all of these values. Maybe I need a smaller amount, larger amounts. All of this can be still edited. What's the key that you adjust the number on the notepad? When you click <coughs> a value that can be adjusted, I click to select and just press up and down on the arrows. So I've selected padding, and I just press up, and it jumps up 2 and 3, etc. It doesn't do fractions. You still have to type 1.5. So something like orange-red, uh, that one doesn't do anything with the arrows. You do have to type an actual name. So here in Firefox, 
I'm in a responsive view, I put it to a small size, I can further select elements, and it should then pop up to tell me what particular CSS is in effect. <coughs> these came from the body, inherited from body. Here's what's been refined on these various lines. If I went with a font size of, um, of larger, that's going to change things a lot. If I if I have a um, if I have these different sizes, I'm going to need to figure out what corresponds with everything else. If I if I want to do a 2.5 m there, well now that's pushing this lower. I need to figure out then that is most likely section blog if I hover over featured posts section blog I had uh, clear height padding was it h2 font size margin 1 2 So I selected the element with the selector and then kind of explored around, looked at this here as well, figured it out that the very first item here was my H2 with featured, and I had code there, 1M at the top. In this case, it looks better at 2M because I changed the size of the font. Now it's kind of getting jumbled up, so I might have to change the line height. If I go back to find H1, I had a line font size, margin top, padding, somewhere I, I need to figure out the line height. I might have to type it manually. Maybe I never redefined line height. 3M, obviously too big. 1.2, 1. So I never wrote a line height in H1. I put one in quickly here. I just clicked and started typing. It's not permanent. As soon as I refresh, it goes away. Be careful. But I figured out, okay, line height of 1 looks better, but then now I've got to figure out maybe that height of 1 there is too small because my text is popping out. What? It might depend on your font. We have different fonts. So here I gave you all these perfect values based on a different font that we chose. You chose your own font, so you'll have to figure out your own values. We're going to get much more practice with this. If it's, this doesn't make, still doesn't quite make sense, we're going to get more practice. And I'm obviously doing it a bit quickly, but that's the idea. You're going to spend time in this in Chrome or Firefox, figure out your perfect values. That looks perfect. No longer here. So I need to figure out, what was that line again? Oh, the uh, H2 feature. <coughs> so now that'll be a 2.4, so that it's no longer covered up. This is why creating a site that is mobile friendly can often take a while and be expensive if you get hired to do this, because you need to know these common breakpoints, you need to set these values based on the design. That font, for me, I needed certain values. For you, you have other values that work fine. You test it in the browser, you test it on real devices, and you create a project that looks good on many devices. We spent all of this time at this point. We did very relatively quickly the content portion the picture, and the text. That was a while ago. We spent so much time just on CSS. But now that we got it up to this point, we can create the other sections. Um, and actually, that's going to be your homework. For next time, you're going to show me that you have created at least one more screen. None of these links work. If I click Heroes, none of these work. But based on everything we've done so far, you have a starting point. It's all designed 
all these links are broken. Your homework is going to be for next time, we'll have a little lab time, but for next time, you need to make one of these links active. What if you figure out a way that if you click read more here, you have a spiderman.html file based on what we've already created here. It should be doable. It's one step outside the box of what we've all done together. So, it's pretty straightforward. Does that make sense? That's your homework. One extra page that works. Anything that you click on, you're going to show me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on one thing, and it should go somewhere. If you want to do them all, great, but there's no extra credit. One, at least that works. Well, if you click on read more here, I would think about reading more about Spider-Man. If you click on villains, I would want to see a screen of villains. So complete what this project is, one more screen, not just to anywhere. One more screen of this website that makes sense for this website. Just one? Just one. Minimum. Just one. So, um, that's it for the moment. We're going to have some lab time if you need a little bit of help. And then when we come back next time, we'll check your homework.